Welcome. How is everybody? Am I okay? All right. If you have a prayer request, if you'll raise your hand, Alex, we'll get you a prayer card. All right, we're going to uh, recognize our graduating class just for in a moment, but before, let me give you a few announcements. Just a reminder that Vacation Bible School starts tonight. I guess you can see some of the stuff that's here. It begins tonight at uh, 6, 6, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Annual conference also begins this afternoon in Florence. I, along with all the other ministers in the annual conference, will be tra and lay delegates will be traveling to Florence Civic Center for the annual conference. It begins this afternoon, it runs through Thursday. Please keep all of us delegates in your prayers as we seek to do the business of the annual conference. We remember those who passed away this past year. We ordain our new clergy and retire clergy. And we take care of business. Coming up real soon is Sakihachi. And if you don't know what Sakihachi is, I see Paige if you want to help. It's probably too late to sign up. Too late to sign up. But you could help other ways, probably like uh, funding, prayers. Always are welcome. Leanna, I got down to you. Got to come up, Leanna, and give your announcement. Good morning. Already know this, but in July, July 15th, actually, I'll be going to. I can't pronounce it, and they told me how, and I forgot. Nambia, right? Nambia, something. Um, Africa to deliver shoeboxes with Samaritan's Purse, their distribution team. And so I decided to do a shoebox drive to help replenish their stack. And it's called Christmas in July, and it's back there in the back. And you can just take a shoebox and a pamphlet, and that has your labels on it, and it tells you what you can pack and what you can't pack. And I just need them back by July 12th. That's a Sunday. And then if you would like to pray with me and my group as we travel... Paige made prayer chains back there and it has a list of everything you can pray for every different day. And if you'd like to help with any financial support for my family and I, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. For those of you who are geographically challenged, that is in West Africa. Is that right? West Africa. All right. Um, Paige? Well, turn it over to you unless yes y'all come on up here and then we'll begin our worship together hey y'all so this morning we're going to recognize some of the graduates i think only two of them are here but those are the two that i actually know so that's good um so um i just this since this is my first year it's been really great to get to know um sam and leanna who are going to be graduates this year i think they've both already graduated and so that's really cool um and so today if you see them tell them congratulations and um, if you guys could just be praying for them as they go off leanna's going to go to pc um and she's going to be doing a children's ministry kind of thing so she's gunning for katie's job so remember that um and then <laughs> Um, Sam, he's going to be going to Spartanburg Methodist. Where's he at? I don't know where he went. Um, yeah, and I think he's kind of undecided about his uh, future plans right now, but weren't we all? So, um, the first graduate, we'll just have Leanna go ahead and come up, and Sam, you can go ahead and come up too, and we've just got a card for you and then a gift. Um, so you guys, just give them a hand. They tried real hard in school, and they graduated. Woo! Yeah, you guys don't have to stand up here. Yeah, Sam, give us a lesson. Then we've also got three more graduates. Um, John Alexander, who finished up his master's. Um, Devin Gibson, who I haven't met, but she finished up um, at Clemson. And then Rebecca Barbary, 
who finished at Greenville Tech doing uh, respiratory therapy. So we can give them a hand even though they're not here. So, all right, I'm gonna go up there now. So. <laughs> Will you stand and worship with us, please? And when before the throne I 
heads and pray with us. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day that you've woken us up again um, so that we can uh, bring glory to your name. Lord, I pray that this morning you speak through Joseph um, so that we all learn a little bit more about you and grow a little closer to you. Lord, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Please turn around and greet your neighbor. Greet your neighbor and uh, children come forward or something. morning. Is everyone awake now? Yeah. Is everyone out of school now? Yeah. No more school so we can get stay up late and play outside and just have a good old time. Well, I want to remind everyone that today we start Vacation Bible School. So if you have a friend or a neighbor who you think might enjoy coming to camp with you to learn about God, please invite them, okay? It would be fun to have something fun to do during the summer. So today, I want to talk to you about Bible verse. And I had asked Natalie and Lauren what they thought I should talk about. What verse? So Natalie gave me a verse. It's from Romans 10.9. And so that's where I got my lesson. Because I thought, well, this is the children's sermon. Why don't we let the children decide what verse they want to talk about? So today we're going to talk about this one, and then I put a lesson, I added another verse, and we'll talk about this one. Now the first thing I want you guys to look at, you see I brought my computer, and I have a picture up here. How many of you know who this man is? Or how many of you know this man? Good. Who can tell me what he did for a living? Kevin. Great. Right, Dr. Seuss books. That's right. It's Dr. Seuss, for the audience out there, it's Dr. Seuss. And his real name is Theodore Seuss Geisel. Now, he is deceased, but follow along with me, okay? So you probably have read many of his stories, right? Can anyone name one of his stories? Emily. Horton, here's the who. Horton, here's the who. Kevin. Fox and Socks. Fox and Socks, Natalie. Go, dog, go. Go, dog, go. Ryan. Hat in the hat. So you guys, you know this per you know this man. So this is the author. This is an actual picture of what he looked like. So most parents and most people recognize him, especially because he's such a great author. If you love to read, you know who he is and you can recognize him easily. And one of the 
the things we want to talk about in relation to the Bible verse that Natalie chose was how everyone knows about Jesus. We know things about him. Many people know things like he was born in a stable and he laid in a manger. Most people know about him that he did many miraculous things while he was here on earth. And they also have learned that how he died for us on the cross and how, if we believe in him, that we would have everlasting life. But we know a lot about Jesus, but they just don't really have a relationship with Jesus. So how do we know or how do we do that? In the Bible, it tells us that Jesus is Lord. And believe, if you believe in our hearts that he died and was raised from the dead to save us, then we can say that we really know him. So today I ask you, we know a lot of things about Jesus, but do you really know him? Jesus wants you to know him as your own personal Lord and Savior. You can know him if you invite him to come and live within your heart. Knowing about Jesus is not the same thing, knowing about Jesus is not the same thing as knowing Jesus. Our scriptures today, there are two. I've added one, and the first one is, comes from John 8, 19. And it says, you do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So today, I'm going to do a special prayer for you and for all of our church members and our families. So bow your heads and pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for our beautiful day that you have given us today, and I especially thank you for each of these young lives here in front of me. Help them and guide them as they age each and every year so that they know that you are their Lord and Savior and that they learn to know you as their Lord and Savior. Bless each of our family members from our church to our mothers and fathers, grandparents, aunt and uncles, and cousins, so that they too can walk in this wonderful journey and declare that you are their Lord and Savior. In your name we pray, amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, this day we sing your praises. The words of our mouths, we hope, will be found acceptable in thy sight. We are your children. We come before you to give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. We're reminded this day that in every place and time you've provided for our needs. Your wisdom's great. You care for us in ways that are best for us. But we must confess we forget easily that your ways are for our benefit. Often we become stubborn. We determine to have our own way. And then we complain at the consequences. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us our selfish demands. Forgive us our lack of faith. Redeem our sin. Make us your own once more. You've called us to be filled with the spirit of faith that we might more boldly proclaim the good news of your presence. Inspire us, fill us with your Holy Spirit that your word may live in our witness to the world. We remember this day those that we love and who are in our hearts and we lift them up to you. We pray that you bring healing. Uh, you release those who struggle. 
and their spirits make whole those whose bodies are wasting away. Give them all a mind to praise you, O Lord. And we especially pray for a sister who has numerous health issues, for Andy who's waiting for a kidney. We pray for our annual conference as they consider the petition this church sponsored. We pray for all these prayers, O Lord, and those that are in our prayer list that are printed and those that are very personal that we pray now in our hearts. We seek to do your will, O Lord, to live and truly as your children. Hear us, we pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's an interesting parable that I've always found kind of interesting, full of teaching and learning. It's in Matthew chapter 21. It's called a parable of two sons. Matthew 21, verse 28. Give attention to the reading of God's word. This is Jesus talking, red letters. Jesus says, What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He, and this son said, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? They answered the first. And then Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Oh Lord, so many times we are confused about what you would have us to do. Help now by the power of the Holy Spirit to make it clear to us what Jesus' point is for us this day. Amen. Well, it seems that this father goes to each of his sons, tells them the same thing. Right off the bat, we can learn that they both begin from the same position with the father. They both begin with the position that they are accepted by the father. Each one is given the message. Each one's given the gift, if you will, equally the same message. So immediately we can learn, I think, from this scripture, something about God. We can learn that the message God gives to the world is a universal message. And this is backed up by scripture. John 12, 32 says, When I am lifted up from the earth, and it's talking about Jesus saying this, I will draw all people to myself. So the message is clear. The very beginning of this parable is clear, and this is the reason Jesus told it, is that God has created the world, and the world has been redeemed by God's action. If God has redeemed the world and the world's been redeemed by God's action, we have a couple of commands that we should follow. One's to love God, for He has redeemed it all for us and each other, and to work in the great vineyard of this earth as God directs us. So that's the first thing we can learn very simply from reading of this parable. The second thing we can learn is about the reaction of the two sons to the message. Uh, one son hears the message, no thanks, I will not go and work. But then he changes his mind and he goes and he works. He first is disobedient and then he is obedient. The other son hears the father's request and he says, sure, I'll go. But then he changes his mind and he's disobedient and he does not go. 
So both sons are disobedient, and that's something else we can learn right off the bat. Another lesson about God and about humanity. Romans 3, 22, 23. The righteousness that comes from God comes through faith to all who believe. For there is no difference. All has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So you can see from the very beginning that the message God has is for all of us equally. It's a gift given to us all. All of us sin. All of us fall short of the glory. All of us are disobedient. But we have a choice. We always have a choice to respond to God and to God's Word. Now, today it's probably important to think about where Jesus was saying this. He was saying this outside the temple. So you would say then that there are both people who are religious and people who are not religious. Just like if you were standing outside this church as church takes up. Some were coming who were religious. Some were passing by or not religious. So it's a mixed bag of people. So this is why this is important for us to think about. Because when he asked this mixed bag of people who did what the Father wanted, they all answered, the Scripture says. They all answered. And so we learn another lesson. Romans 1, 20, For since the creation of the world, God's qualities, His eternal power, His divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. And Psalm 19, 1 also says it this way, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. So we understand then that God's message is clear and unmistakable. It's understandable to people inside and outside of religion. So let's recap real quick. What do we learn right from just reading this scripture, this parable, is this. God's message is universal. It is for and should be shared with everyone. God's message is to all people who are not worthy to receive it, for all have sinned. And God's message is clear and understandable to all those, whether inside or outside the church. Now all those things are basic things that you can pick up by reading this parable. The question, though, that I saw that seems to me a little harder to answer is this. Why would Jesus ask a question that everyone can answer? Because the right answer is not as important as the right response. In other words, this parable is about a contrast of a life of good words, but one empty of good works. This parable is about God's invitation and our either believing response or our unbelieving response to it. This is an invitation to all people to become sons and daughters in the kingdom, even before we've acted as such, and especially when our nature is to be disobedient. So it's important for us to reiterate and think about this today. Friends, who we trust reveals what we believe and eventually how we'll finally act. If you only believe in your own judgment and understanding, you'll trust no one else but yourself, and you'll act accordingly. And so this parable of God's grace then is also a parable of God's judgment. On which of these two sons will judgment fall? On the second. Why? Because he did not do the will of the Father. And what is the will of the Father? I quote from Jesus himself, John 6, 40. This is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son... Jesus, standing, speaking, living, dying, rising, ever present. Everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise Him up at the last day. I hope you understand. The point is of this parable, and the reason Jesus told it, is that judgment falls on unfaith. That's where judgment falls. It's not that the tax collectors and the harlots are going into the kingdom because they straightened up and flew right. They are being saved because of faith. They believed. And it's not that the good sons have all of a sudden descended into bad behavior, that they will not go into the kingdom. It's because they have refused to believe in the Father's grace. Judgment falls upon faith and unfaith alone. This is reiterated throughout the scriptures in lots of different places. Think of the prodigal son. Think about the parable of the workers who worked all day and complained about the generosity of the landowner. My friends, this is a 
cru the crucial, ex essential part of the Scripture that we all must remember and understand. It's faith, and it's as simple as that. We either believe in God's grace and have faith in it to not only help us who sin, but others, or we don't. If your heart is strangely warmed by God's amazing grace in your life, you will exhibit grateful behavior. And grateful behavior is exhibited this way, by your presence in worship, by your prayers, your service, your financial support, your actions must authenticate your words if you are to believe, be a faithful Christian. Behavior in the final analysis can only be exhibited by faithful trust in God's grace to save you. Sinful nature and all, and others even worse off than you. And one can reasonably argue, as did Jesus, that if you believe this, you will be exhibiting gratitude in your actions, and thus you will be doing the will of the Father. I think it's important for us to hear that because those who said they would accept God's invitation but did not, and think, in other words, the son who said, yes, I'll go, but then he didn't. Jesus said the sinners, those are the ones who are disobedient. No, I'm not going to do it, but I, then I did. Jesus said that the sinners are entering the kingdom ahead of everyone else. Because the sinners saw themselves as they truly were. Do you see yourself as you truly are? I do every day when I look in the mirror. I'm sinful. I'm weak. I need, faith. I need to have faith so that God's grace will carry me home. Those people, the sinners, saw themselves as they truly were, sinful. And they believed in their heart, the messenger and his message of grace. They did not erect walls because they understood what walls mean. When human beings set themselves up as judges over and above God to clean up the world by ridding it of undesirable elements, not waiting for God to act at the final judgment, that is erecting walls. It is the idea that the job is too big for God, so we got to help Him out. My friends, God does not need our help. God needs us simply to listen and to be merciful, to offer forgiveness and compassion. Jesus holds up these people, and it would have to have been an awfully shocking comment to those who are listening that day. But Jesus holds up the tax collectors and the prostitutes, not because of their behavior, but because they understood the difference and the danger in letting exclusion trump God's grace. They understood that God's grace is extended through up to us all. And in Jesus Christ, the undeserved invitation goes out to an undeserving people. In other words, there's always two different reactions to God. Always two different reactions. And these two different reactions represent all possible actions a person can take. There was a man who had two sons. Which one will you be? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We're called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, and life and death and life beyond death. God is with us. We're not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have our offering and then we'll have the sacrament of Holy Communion.
I'll direct you to the to the slides. Here now the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, seek to live in peace with each other. Therefore let us confess our sin before God and each other. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with our whole heart. We failed to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray now prayers of confession. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we're yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church all honor and glory is yours Almighty Father now and forever. This is the bread of heaven, the body of Christ. This is the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ. Um, the, our table is open to all who are present, regardless of whether you're a member, regardless of age. You're welcome to come to the table. Those three who are assisting me, if you'll come up now, I'll re you can receive, and then we'll have the two stations.
you may come. pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
song, hallelujah. know the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Almighty, Eternal, Triune God, one God now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week.